Okay, just pulled up to the gym for leg day today. This is my second session of the week out of four. So my training split has changed since I started the cut, going from a five day split down to a four day split. So we kept volume relatively uh, similar, slight, just slightly down. But the main difference being, like I said, just dropping the frequency from five to four. So because I've uh, obviously dropped the calories quite significantly from like three and a half thousand down to two and a half thousand, uh, that can have a potential effect on my recovery as well as my energy. So just by having a slightly uh, reduced frequency, it means I've got more time to recover, more days for recovery in between sessions. Uh, and that should help me keep my performance up to where I want it to be and continue progressing with my training. Uh, so obviously the key for me now during this fat loss phase, obviously I want to lose the fat, but uh, for my physique to look good and to look better, uh, I need to be able to retain as much muscle mass as possible. And that's going to come through prioritizing my training and my performance. So this way should help me do that very well. So uh, let's get into the gym. So as part of the four day split, like I said, I got the upper lower, upper lower. So one of my lower body sessions is more quad dominant. And one of my lower body sessions is more glute and hand focused. Um, so first up in this session, I got the RDL. And so what I'm trying to focus on in terms of form of this is just keeping tight. So you can see almost before every rep, um, but I kind of create a big, big breath into the belt. So as I kind of inhale, I kind of expand my core to push against the belt to create that uh, intra-abdominal pressure and create that stiffness at the trunk to help stabilize my spine. Next up, I've got the hip dominant leg press. So with any leg press, it's never gonna be completely quad or completely glute, but we can change the setup to help bias one more than the other. So because this one's a more glute and hamstring dominant session, so what I've done is, is moved it more into a kind of reclined position. So it's uh, opening my hip angle out. And what that means is that I can get my feet up a little bit higher on the platform and a little bit wider and that just gives a better pull for the glutes to do work rather than the quad. So you can see here, I've kind of um, labeled this one with some moment arms so you can see the difference. So where there's a greater moment arm to the hip than the knee, uh, that shows that we got a greater challenge for that muscle. So third lift is a seat hamstring curl. So the reason I use this movement is just for some more direct work for the hamstrings and working in a different range to what the RDLs would have taken the hamstrings through. Uh, and the second thing is after quite two quite difficult movements, I've now got a really nice stable uh, movement where I've got the machine kind of helping cr create stability, but also I've added the seat belt as well to kind of strapped around my hips uh, and around the, the seat of the uh, hamstring curl machine as well. So this is the last exercise of the session. So this seat of calf press is my favorite one in terms of just loading the calf. So you've got more, I feel, control over the actual motion as well as control over the load because the weight is not kind of pushing it all the way down through your body. Uh, like a standing calf raise, I just prefer this one. So let's talk a little bit about my nutrition. So uh, the first change I made really was of course, I need to drop some calories because I was eating in a bulking phase. I was consuming like three and a half thousand calories a day um, and sometimes more at different phases. Uh, so obviously for the cut, uh, I've had to make a change to drop that. Um, so what I've done is drop from three and a half thousand, like I said, down to two and a half thousand straight away. So a big thousand calorie cut. Uh, and then the macros now are 240 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fats. Uh, so I'm running that most days. And then I've also got some high days that I'll include as and when needed. So I'm using them based on my kind of mindset, performance, energy, those kind of things. So within those days, my macros are going to be slightly different. So I've got 200 grams of protein, so slightly down, but I've got 350 grams of carbs, so that's up by 100. Uh, and then my fat's up to 70 as well, so just a small increase in fat, just to allow me to have a bit more flexibility in my food choices. All right, so I've got my meal prep here. So delivery just came through. I'm not really a master in the kitchen like Chris, so uh, I had to take the easier option uh, and go for some meal prep. So I've uh, I've been trying out Nutrifast. And, uh, so here we go. First up, we got uh, some mango and lime chicken, red pepper pasta, and orange infused carrots. So you can see on there, we've got the calories and the macro breakdowns. So again, just nice and easy for me to track. So that's the first one. For this one, we've got some uh, fajita pulled chicken thigh, plain pasta, salsa, nice little mix in there. And then last up, we've got some Cajun chicken, Bombay potatoes, butternut squash, green beans. Looks pretty nice. So 
you can see there what we've got today. So this one is the uh, barbecue brisket with lemon and herb potatoes and seasonal veg. So the other thing I'm doing as part of the cut is also just to increase uh, general daily activity as well. So just trying to get my steps up for the day. So I move like six to 8,000 steps a day. So I've realized that I need to do like 20 to 30 minute walk every day on top of just my general activity from work and stuff like that. Um, and that should get me up to the target. And obviously that's not too high. So that gives me plenty of room to add more over time as and when needed. And it also means I don't really need to do any cardio or anything at the moment. So uh, just the walk increases the activity enough that I don't need to do any kind of formal cardio in the gym, which is nice because uh, it's not that fun. And I prefer just to get some music in or a podcast or something, catch a few Pokemon and Pokemon Go on the walk uh, and I can get burn all the calories I need to for the day. So as well as the training and just going for walks, uh, the other thing we've been doing in terms of activity and just increasing that uh, is shooting some hoops. So me and Chris have been learning. So we've got a series coming out for you showing just how bad we are uh, and how we're trying to improve uh, and progress over time, So which is just kind of for fun and for skills. But what we want to do is use it for activity as well while we're trying to burn some extra calories. So we were going to show you today, but um, as you can see, is that it has been pissing down with rain. So our services are quite ready for us to play today and show you what we've been working on. Um, but what I will do is show you with the NBA season coming next week. Uh, why don't we have a little look at my jersey collection? So I've got one rule with jersey buying. I can only buy current jerseys that are bucks, but I can buy all the retro jerseys that I want. Giannis, bucks jersey of course. Number two, Cream City, bucks jersey. Grease jersey, see the little grease flag on the side there. Pretty sick. The MVP jersey, for you honest. You see the little silver and white. You see the little details at the bottom, like a little signature. Come on. Let's move you on to some classic jersey. Bulls jersey. Man, like Scotty. Got a Heat jersey. The legend D Wade. Magic jersey, man like Shaq, MJ Ball jersey. You see the uh, little Larry O'Brien trophy at the top there. Jordan on the back. And while we're on the topic of goats, got a retro Kobe Bryant jersey. There we go. Let's see what this one too. Kobe Raptors on Mr. Vince Carr. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, peace.